And this is the core of Galilean relativity, that all inertial frames are equal and all observe the exact same laws of physics. Next, we move on to Sir Isaac Newton and his laws of motion. Newton's ideas flowed from a different perspective than Galileo's, and he expressed his convictions in his Principia in 1687, 55 years after Galileo's work. In it, he described his three laws of motion. Of course, the first law is the law of inertia, the second law is the definition of a force, and the third law, which is his equal and opposite law demonstrating the balance of forces. I'm not going to go into great detail on these laws. For that, just watch my introductory astronomy video where I talk about that and all its implications. I'll link that below. With that, the law of inertia is actually a special case of the force law in which there is no force acting upon a mass. Thus, F equals ma, where F equals zero. This would mean the acceleration is zero for a non-zero mass, and acceleration is the change in speed or direction with time. If there isn't any change in uniform motion due to a lack of acceleration, either the mass in question is at rest or moving in a straight line. Galilean relativity, of course, says that the object moving in a straight line is exactly at rest if you're in the correct coordinate system, i.e. one that's moving with the mass. The first law, therefore, is a direct consequence of Galileo's ship on a glassy sea analogy. That boat was a non-rotating, non-accelerating reference frame. Stated differently, for Galileo's principle of relativity to hold to Newtonian mechanics, we have to begin with a coordinate system in which Newtonian mechanics is itself valid. However, Newton started from a completely different philosophical stance than Galileo. Newton based his mechanics on the notion of an absolute time and an absolute space. As he wrote in his great work in the Principia in 1687, absolute true and mathematical time of itself and from its own nature flows equably without relation to anything external. Absolute space in its own nature without relation to anything external remains always similar and immovable. What this means was that Newton assumed that there was an absolute reference frame in both space and time. Galileo's relativity also assumed an absolute time, but didn't have much to say about the absolute nature of space. Galileo wanted to upset some apple carts, but Newton was looking for greater universal truths, so Newton's ideas carry the weight of being obvious or common sense. Likely, likely, you too think that space and time are both absolute constructs in which we live our lives and things trundle along tickety-boo. What's good about Galileo's relativity is that it does fit nicely into Newtonian mechanics. However, Galileo would assert that even if some absolute reference frame of space and time were to exist, there would be no experiment that could determine it. Now, Newton came along and said, well, wait a second, what about the concept of a rotating bucket? So imagine if you took a bucket full of water and got it spinning at some angular velocity. After some time, the bucket and water will reach some equilibrium. This means that the water won't be moving with respect to the bucket at all. Once this is all set up, the surface of the water will be concave. That is, the surface of the water near the sides of the bucket is higher than the surface of the water near the center of the bucket. Now, if you compare this to a bucket full of water that's not spinning, here the water will, will be not moving with respect to the bucket also, but in this instance, the surface of the water will be flat across the top. So what's the difference between the moving and still bucket? How can we explain this difference? On one hand, perhaps the only thing we can appeal to, the only facts we can appeal to, are the relative motions of the water in the bucket. But this is the same in both cases. The water is not moving with respect to the bucket. Therefore, the only difference between the two situations seems to be the shape of the water surface. And on the other hand, there's another ready explanation for the shape of the water surface. When the water is spun in a bucket, that is, when the water in bucket system is moving with respect to absolute space, the surface forms a concave shape, and when the bucket is at rest with respect to absolute space, the surface of the water is flat. And this second argument, which seems to be logical, is the one that Newton upheld and asserted. Trying to understand the differences between do these two ways of thinking is important. Newton's first law is a conditional. In an inertial frame, an object under no forces has constant velocity. Any spinning object thought experiment, such as suppose that some bucket or disc or pizza or whatever, is spinning with respect to an inertial frame. For someone who believes in this absolute space, the definition is 
that there's a frame moving with constant velocity with respect to absolute space. Now, much later than Newton, well, we're diving away from the subject a bit, Ernst Mach defined an inertial frame to be a frame that's at rest with respect to the distant fixed stars. This basically gives the same results as Newton's theory, but only when there are lots of stars evenly distributed very far from us. For other kinds of universes, like empty ones with nothing in them at all except a bucket and some water, Mach thought we weren't justified in saying anything at all. So he only accepted spinning object arguments when they were made in universes like ours, in which case he could say that inertial means at rest or close enough to with respect to the distant stars. Therefore, absolute space in Mach's idea was not needed. So when you have a lone bucket disc or pizza spinning with nothing else around, you can't say what would happen without assuming of an absolute space. If Mach's theory was right, then you get still get some really tiny centrifugal forces from the relative motion of the bucket and the water as the system spun up. And this is like away from Earth, away from any kind of gravity, away from any re reference frame, out in space with just distant stars. Also, if the bucket was extremely thick, you'd get some detectable differences between Machian mechanics and Newtonian mechanics. But this is a serious digression. The main point here is that Newton's laws of motion are applicable to Galileo's concept of relativity. But Newton added on the prima facie, apparently common sense idea of absolute space and absolute time. Galileo would have likely been amazed by the laws of motion and have been intrigued by Newton's rotating bucket argument, but he might have been annoyed that his stowaway butterflies might possibly be slammed into lower bulkheads of schooners that are apparently not moving. 